The view is stunning as Toba Inlet carves its way deep into traditional lands of the Clahoos First Nation. Just 160 kilometers north of Vancouver, this pristine wilderness is rich with wildlife and home to BC's largest independent run-of-river hydroelectric project. The East Toba Montrose project is being built on partnerships, partnerships between government, First Nations, local communities, and big business. We've broken new ground in our partnership with the local communities, with the Clahoos, with the school board. It was a, a, a big opportunity and uh, from our perspective the stars were pretty much aligned for the Clahoos when this opportunity was tabled. They're not only getting an education that's relevant to them, they're going into the workplace making a great wage doing something they want to do within their own community. This is a, a wonderful example of successful outcomes and that's why we're so pleased to be involved with it. In 2002, the provincial government directed BC Hydro to find new sources of green power generation. That's when Vancouver-based Plutonic Power looked to BC's Sunshine Coast for opportunities. We went to the Toba Valley and Butte Inlet because the natural endowment of the, the resources is world-class. And when you've got a world-class resource, it affords you the ability to go the extra mile to go and innovate and create opportunities like we have with the school board in the Clahoos Nation. When I looked at this project, I saw a real opportunity to kickstart long overdue economic development for the Clahoos First Nation uh, with both short-term and long-term opportunities. In the short term, it was uh, employment, capacity development, education, but in the long term, an opportunity to uh, get royalty payments and infrastructure within the valley. With an agreement in place to provide training and employment opportunities, the Clahoos then turned to the Powell River School District. We provided streams of training in carpentry, welding, and culinary arts for First Nations students. Once they completed those programs, those students were then given an opportunity with our partnership with Kiwit to go onto the work site and get real life experience to collect hours towards their apprenticeship. When the plate is thinner, you got to lean the torch toward yourself as you're cutting. To get into this program, it's just like applying for a job. We screen students, they write tests, we check to see that they have the right aptitude because we want to ensure that these students are the right students for the trades they choose because it's a trade for life. I'm doing this because I believe that um, the First Nation youth need role models and um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. In just 10 months, all these students have an opportunity to complete Level C welding certification. In the end, many may have jobs waiting for them. Opportunities also await First Nations students from this carpentry class. We'll set the blade to six and a quarter. The complete program lasts four years, but after just 10 months of training, students leave here with their first year apprenticeship. It makes a, a great difference in my life. I'm a single dad. Uh, I have a three and a half year old little girl that I take care of, so um, it means a lot to have the opportunity to be here in Powell River and close to my home and close to my family. It's been really neat to see how things have been evolving uh, in Powell River School District. Uh, they've gone from offering high school apprenticeship programs uh, to now uh, these uh, major work projects that are providing employment for the Clahoos people, uh, opportunities for families and economic development for British Columbia. With hundreds of workers in need of food and housing, the Powell River School District and Clahoos First Nation saw an opportunity. Together, they formed PRESS, the Powell River Educational Services Society. It provides all food services and housekeeping at Toba Camp. It also puts all its profits into an educational legacy fund for the Clahoos. The kitchen here is a working classroom. Culinary arts students from Powell River are hired to work on their apprenticeships alongside Red Seal certified chefs. It's been a great opportunity. I've enjoyed it. It's taught me a lot. I get a lot more experience up here than I have anywhere else. The housekeeping department has a Clahoos first hiring policy. And that means good paying jobs close to home. When construction is complete, the workers will go home 
but they'll leave behind $39 million worth of infrastructure. As a result of this infrastructure, now we have uh, a sustainable forestry operation that we're uh, about to implement within the traditional territory and high streams of revenue uh, that we can leverage into other opportunities such as uh, gooey ducks, ecotours, fish hatcheries, uh, infrastructure in the local community. This is a model of what's possible when you collaborate and you innovate and you have passion for apprenticeship and you have passion for young people. Uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous model that uh, we hope that others will take a look at. I think PRESS is a pretty exciting initiative. It actually, uh, it's starting to bridge education and First Nations together. You don't see a lot of that. There's always a fear of the unknown when it comes to education. and. There's always a fear from the First Nation perspective to engage the outside communities and do business and I couldn't think of uh, uh, better people with more integrity than the people at School District 47 who have worked diligently and tirelessly on this endeavor uh, and came to the Clahoos and provided us with uh, an abundance of, you know, not just uh, education opportunities but also um, an opportunity to, to branch out and explore um, building on the business capacity and the business level and, and how you would approach that. Uh, we've learned a lot uh, as a result of this JV. Creating these kinds of opportunities and partnerships, uh, sometimes it can be a test of patience. We're breaking new ground. There is no classroom course on how you deliver this kind of thing. There's no textbook. So each party has had um, different expectations of what we might be able to achieve. And I think that at the core of the success is the dogged determination of the chief, of uh, the superintendent, the school board, of our executive and, and management team to try to continue to push to new limits on what we might be able to achieve through these kinds of innovative programs. I think it's extremely important when a First Nation is looking to a joint venture or looking to corporate expertise to ensure that that corporation has the best interest of their nation at heart. In our nonprofit society, we're not profit driven. We're driven to help our First Nations partners get education and training and ensure the profits stay within your own community.